Brood Nation, how are you? How's everything going? It's a beautiful Monday. Pokemon Day. Happy Pokemon Day for everybody who celebrates. Do you celebrate Pokemon Day, Tom? No? Oh, well, sorry. Happy, I... Uh-huh. We've had this discussion. I was more of a Digimon. Oh, uh, when's Digimon Day? Huh? When's Digimon Day? Every day is Digimon Day. Every day is Digimon Day? Oh, yeah. Oh. Because it starts with D. So D is for day? Yeah. Okay. It's every day mm-hmm. that starts... Mm-hmm. Shut the fuck up. What's up, Brady Nation? I like Digimon. <laughs> Tom like Digimon. I like Star Fox. And Star Fox just had a 30th anniversary. So... Go viral! Nope, 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 nope. Um, fuck you, Slim. We are talking all about Star Fox, one of my favorite franchises. Who am I? I'm Sherm. I'm Tom. And we are the Rude Boys, episode 142. Oh, fucking Working hearty, on it right now. We got a hearty voice thing going. Bum, 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 bum. Um... I don't know. Yes, it's a Monday recording, so Ugh. yeah, get get ready, get ready for some energy. Well, we did also our Harry Potter episode, so you know things are going to be a little light, you know. But you know mm. we're going to give Star Fox, hopefully, I see the quality it deserves. <laughs> it's not so bad. I just need that for a quick. Uh, you know, I mean, you could look through it while I talk about Star Fox because I know you don't pay attention to me anyway. So it's got pictures you can look at. Sweet. Oh, okay, that's perfect. You know what, Tommy? You know what you need? Coffee. A nice refreshment. Oh, all right. You can have a coffee, but right now... <clears throat> gonna make you up a Fox McCloud. God, I hate all this. Right? What, do you, what do you hate? <laughs> Just your stupid names. No, I, I, this is what it's called. So, this is a riff off a uh, cocktail called the Fox River, which is a... Um, it's basically an old-fashioned with... Uh, this right here, Tom, what does that say? Creme de Coco. What? You didn't do it. Creme de Cacao. That's not how you say cacao. Well, I say it phonetically. I say cacao. Yeah. And then you always say cacao. No. Oh, my lord. It's only for the blue. That's Curacao. No, but that's what I use it for. Mm, I beg to differ. Huh? I have said this before. So anyway, this is a riff off a... It's an old-fashioned creme de cacao. Cacao! And, there it is. And, um... But... It's made with scotch to keep the old Fox McCloud um, name frame going. Oh, bitters. You're not going to taste these bitters. Well, actually, you will taste these bitters, but it's orange bitters. So it's good. It gives it a nice, um... I hate bitters. I give it, a, it almost tastes like a chocolate-covered orange. Yeah. A little bit. It's still bitters. Well, Tom, shut the fuck up. All right? <laughs> Open your mind... And your mouth, and your palate, and your brain. So what I'm doing right now, Nation, get that nice little Foley going on right there. I'm muddling up a sugar cube Foley. Audio sounds. Um, Oh my gosh. Is that why he he was named Mick Foley? That was why he was named Mick Foley, yes. That was why his ancestors decided to pick the name Foley as a surname. You're right. Tom, you're good, man. You are fucking good. You're on the fucking ball today. Have I ever told you the story? <laughs> Not don't bring up Alex Hammerstone. Do not bring up Alex Hammerstone. Of Alexander nope. Hammerstein. Okay, no. Tom, what you can do for me <laughs> is uh, please get the ice cubes in the, uh, in, the, in, the in the freezer, please. Nation is the what? This is him censoring me. I'm not censoring you. I'm just like. That is definitely a when um, Rude Boys After Hours a- occurs, like fully, 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 that can be a thing. When Tommy takes his edible, and... Um, They're really fucking frozen. <laughs> well, don't put them in just yet. Hey, look, we al- look, we almost had a Rude Boys After Hours this... It is true. Th- ...this Saturday. This past Saturday. But we decided, we're like, yeah, no. Yeah, we were originally going to record on Saturday. Saturday turned into a long work day for myself. And then it was a movie night, which I guess we could talk about in Rude Boys Ketchup. Yeah. All right. Come on, you cocksucker. There you go. Whoa. Not talking to you. Talking to the ice cube. All right. Give it a little mixy mixy. So, Nation, like I said, it's an ice, it's a uh, sugar cube with orange bitters, creme de cacao, cacao, and scotch stirred 
a la a old fashioned. Uh, and a big time ice cube. I think with sugar cubes, like old fashions nowadays can get done with like a simple syrup or a demerara syrup. Basically uh -huh. sugar and water. Right. Um, uh -huh. sure, exactly. Um, which definitely kind of, uh, you know, it, it speeds up the sweetening process. Uh huh. Because as you can see, you can still see some sugar granules. Yeah, on the side of the thing. glass. Well, not, don't look inside of the glass. I had to clean the muddler somehow. Use the line. Fucker. Are you okay? Oh. Chris just sliced himself open. I kind of did a little bit. Like, I saw that slip, I was like, oh, God. Okay. I wasn't even George hacking him either, Nation. Uh, you alright? Do you want to go get a band aid? No, oh. I'll be good. Oh. It's good. You know, it, it's so, so let's explain what happened. <laughs> <laughs> what not to do? <laughs> I took a fucking vegetable peeler and a uh, mist. <laughs> so what I'm I, not laughing at your pain. What I'm I was at, doing, I'm laughing at how. Oh my god! Yes. Why don't you go? Why, why don't you go clean that up? Well, let's drink. Let's let's clink it up first, and we'll do this to Blitzkrieg. So, nation, what's in our mouths is a Fox McCloud. Fox <laughs> McCloud is in our mouth. And some of Chris's blood. No, 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 no. I, I, I did my absolute darndest to not contaminate. Um, uh, it is uh, sugar cube, orange bitters, creme de cacao, scotch, uh, on the rocks, stirred, and a uh, a garnish of lime peel. Um, clink it up. I do like that. That is quite tasty. What you think, Tommy? I like it. Yeah. Sweet, right? I like it because you don't taste the bitter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, orange bitter is different than regular bitters because it, 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 it's, it's gonna, you're going to get orange right. out of it. At, um, like botanical, aromatic bitters, you're going to get like fragrance. Right, right, right. You're not even going to like, I don't know, feel it really, but yeah. it's just like, it's there. It's supposed to do that. When you're doing anything with like egg whites or anything like that, you, you want to do bitters to kind of kill the egg smell because it just is what it is. Don't or you should go get a band aid. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go clean up. Go, go, um go, go, but go clean up. let's uh let's segue let's barrel roll into Blitzkrieg News. Full thrusters ahead. So uh injury update. Um, I don't have a whole lot of band-aids here in the house, and what band-aids I do have, I just bled right through. Oh, so we that are, was a good one. We're doing, oh yeah, no, it's one of those nice little slices, uh, yeah, so it's a lot of surface area on it, just gotta let it, it's gonna tire itself out. You know, so what? if I start getting loopy, it's blood loss, please call an ambulance. This will be my only drink for the night. Here's a joke. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. What do you? Is this something you just looked up in what the you, uh, in the in the in what the do you call, What What do you call a dollar tree in the UK? A dollar tree yeah. in the UK. What pound town? Pound town? Why town? Oh, because that's the area. Okay, I understand. It's a building. I was like tree. Okay. <laughs> I've lost a lot of blood, Tom. <laughs> Look, can we move on to Blitzkrieg News, please? <laughs> We're already in Blitzkrieg News. I'm getting a little woozy here, man. <sighs> nope, that's the top ten. I'll probably have to redress my wound my wound uh, at the end of the segment. <laughs> Going, starting off in games as we always do. Yes. Happy Pokemon Day! Several announcements happened! Woo! Yeah, Pokemon! Pokemon! Pokemon you, know, you know, Pikachu was there? Oh, was like it? some weird animatronic Furby Pikachu, really distressing. Pika, Pika. Really kind of weird to look at. They could have just done a CG Pikachu and it'd be fine, but like, it's a lot. Right, let's say. Um, yeah. So Pokemon Day happened. Happy Pokemon Day. That means it was the anniversary of when Pokemon Red and Green hit Japan. Okay. Um, big day, big day in the video game uh, community because um, you know, revitalized the Game Boy, Nintendo, just multimedia as a whole, man. People still would still talk about Pokemon. Uh, but Pokemon Day happened. A couple announcements hit. Um, we got this uh, the, the, the 
the big thing, I would say, is the DLC for Scarlet and Violet. Uh, it's called Hidden Treasures of Area Zero, and it's a two-parter, like they did with uh, Sword and Shield. Uh-huh. Uh, the first one is called The Teal Mask, and the second one is called The Indigo Disc. Both are hitting uh, by the end of this year, will probably fall and winter. Hmm. Um, pr- presumably going to be new areas, new Pokemon, returning Pokemon from uh, games that, uh, that, that that weren't in Scarlet and Violet. So that's pretty neat. Uh, Pokemon Sleep is finally coming. This was their Sleep. this was their um, attempt to do. Uh, yeah, don't look at it. Chris giving me the thumbs up yeah. whole episode. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> um, why is my phone not charging? Um, is this it not is in? of course it's plugged in. Oh, what? Oh, it was a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> Pokemon Sleep, which is like the uh, the gamification sleep aid with Pokemon. That's coming in the summer. It's going to have some Pokemon Go functionality. You still playing Pokemon Go, Tommy? He's not. Um, no! Pokemon No. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Netflix is going to have a Pokemon series called Pokemon Concierge, which is like this... Uh, <laughs> it's going to be stop motion oh, animated. Fuck. Which you never see that. A lot. Did we clink it up? Yeah, we did clink it yeah, up. Yeah, we did. Okay. Um, there was a lot going on. Um, it's coming to Netflix, and it's gonna be like a Pokemon living on a vacation island. So, all right, cool. Moving on. Yep, moving on. Mortal Kombat 12 confirmed with a K for this year. Yes. Cool. This was announced at uh, Warner Brothers uh, in, in a um, investors meeting talking about games upcoming, and they said, oh yeah, uh, by the way, Mortal Kombat. So no big, like, um, grandiose announcement. Right. It was just the company being like, oh yeah, no, that's common. So, oh, does that mean 2023? Does that mean fiscal year 2023? So maybe yeah. by the end of March next year, but, you know, it, it's, it's you know, it's happening. I so, mean, NetherRealm hasn't hit, hasn't done anything since, I guess, Mortal Kombat... 11. 11? Yeah. So, so we were... Not to say they haven't done anything. That's rude of me. That's, you know, uh, uh, in the Injustice or Mortal Kombat uh, realm. Yeah. So we were talking about, like, fighting games uh, on Saturday before you yes. came by. Yes. Or I don't know if you were there. No, you think you yeah, were there. Was, there was yeah. some video, uh, some fighting game conversation. Going yeah, and like, okay. I, I like, I, I like fucking Mortal Kombat, but... I do like fucking... Nothing touches Street Fighter. Like... <laughs> Understandable, man. Like I said, I love lore and I really, fighting games. I re- like, and costumes. I see six and I'm like, six does look interesting. Did you see... But I'm not getting caught again. So, um, there was a PlayStation State of Play also. They mm-hmm. did they, they, they did some Resident Evil 4 remake stuff, which looks really dope. Right, right, right. Uh, it's coming out next month. Or, yeah, next month because I'm putting this out tomorrow. Um, and they did um, some reveals for some characters in Street Fighter Six. Got Zangief, uh, a new character, and Cammy, and um, hmm. let me tell you, Capcom knows what they're doing with Cammy. They are like, it's. Does like, she look like Kylie Minogue? No, 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 no. Well, actually, so fun fact: deep cut for Cammy. One of her supers is the move she does in the animated movie. This is the first time that's ever been adapted into the game. Oh, really? She does like a like a headstand twisty yeah. thing and like a hurricane rana sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I guess presumably snaps the dude's neck. That movie's so fucking good. Man. That is pretty good. Um, that's we. Yeah, I th- we're gonna have to do. do yeah, we have to do a go to the movies. I'll Maybe bring when, um. I'll bring the big. I'll bring the big book of uh, DVDs <laughs> since everything is in books right. now. But um, yeah, no, they know what they're doing with Cammy. Just long story short. Um, but yeah, Street Fighter. Neat. Well, hey, Mortal Kombat, neat. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, E3 is looking more and more pathetic. So a lot of people. I think this is really because like Nintendo was just like, yeah, mm, E3's not in our plans, so we're out. Um, which is like a, a big confirmation because it was pretty much unconfirmed that the, uh, you know Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo weren't going to E3. Ubisoft also said it's like, oh, we'll go to maybe we'll go to three E3 if it happens. So like nobody's really everybody's doing their own thing. That's really right. what it comes down to. Which is kind of sad, because it's good having all these... It was just a big... Um, it, it was it was, it was was a focused time for all these cool announcements. Right. Which I dug, you know? Maybe they weren't for me, but it was always like, like ooh, it's exciting, it's E3 time, you know? But like, I also feel like... back in high school being excited for E3. 
But I feel like now those big announcements happen at the Video Game Awards. You're right. Things have changed. You know, there's more direct-to-video uh, situations. We had a Nintendo Direct, a Sony State of Play. Microsoft will do their thing, you know? Like, people will announce things when they announce things. They'll control their own narrative, basically. That's really what it kind of comes down to nowadays. Uh, so, um, yeah, E3. I don't know. Rest in peace, I guess. Yeah. Comic book news. Comic book news. Nothing ever truly dies. The Marvel Ultimate Universe is invading this June. Yep, Ultimate Universe coming back. Like four issues. It's got something to do with the Maker, which is that universe of Richards. Richards. Fucking dirtbag. Yeah, um, because I know he was um, he was featured in Donny Cates' Venom series um, as he's trying to get back to the Ultimate Universe. Mm-hmm. You know, he plays predominantly in um, uh, Absolute Carnage. Um, because he's, you know, he's kind of a dick, you know, he's there, yeah, he and all is. this chaos is happening, so he's there, you know? Um, yeah. Open Universe. Back, baby. In pog form. And in that fucking, like, the cover that they showed, like, that I saw on Instagram, like, on the Marvel Instagram uh-huh. channel, not one fucking Ultimate X-Man. Not one. Not one was fucking there's there. There's a lot of Ultimates, you know? There's a well, lot no, of the, X-Men, the X-Men did not have a good time in that universe. Right, yeah, I understand. So probably the best, they, you know, they just kind of like, nah, they, yeah, they were there, yeah. you know? Like Cyclops fucking killed uh, Magneto. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then as he was talking, Quicksilver pushed a bullet through Cyclops' head, brain. Hmm. And that's, yeah. Did he survive? Um. No. 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 Oh. Presumably, uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were Wolverine's yes. kids. Oh, and they were also together. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why you just did the the. Docking. It's really hard to do the uh, yeah. anything uh-huh. on my thumb right now. Yeah, so. yeah it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, things get a bit chaotic in Marvel. Contest of Chaos is also coming in summer of twenty twenty three. Don't know too much about it right now. I, I it's just, a, it, it's another u- big universe thing. I it, it looks like from what the cover and the promotional images were showing, it looks like there's just a bunch of heroes fighting each other. Right. Yeah. 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 And the the catchphrase or the tagline is something like "When the heroes embrace their chaos." So it's like they're probably mind controlled to fight. Oh, what did it's one what of did those, Wanda do? You know. Yeah. What did Wanda do? Or it might be like the Beyonder. I don't know. Right, you know, right. it's one of those chaos. things. Chaos. I mean, con- contest. Chaos. Contest. Chaos. Contest. It's Beyond that and Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Having a Could contest be. of chaos. Could be. Um, movies. Ooh. More Lord of the Rings movies are being forged in the fa- uh, fires of Mordor. I almost said files of Mordor. It's file, yeah, because they filed the Yeah, I know, shut up, I'm an idiot. Racer Group and Warner Brothers and I guess New Line Cinema or whoever. Yeah. They're like, yeah, let's make some more Lord of the Rings movies. And they're like, cool. So, that's what's happening. How much did they have to dole out to the fucking Tolkien estate? So what exactly, what other um, content is there to mine? You know what I mean? From, is there, is there a lot? There's a lot? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. And the Tolkien know. estate is very, like, picky about what gets yeah, sure. put out. Well, they allowed three Hobbit movies, so... That was ridiculous. Yeah, so... That's fine. Can't be too picky, I guess. That was, uh... What do you yeah, great-great-great-grandkids need, 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 need to fucking pay bills, huh? Yeah, listen, we all got... Uh, they money. could do... I mean, they could do the... I'm gonna butcher the name. Sailor Land? Thank you. You're welcome. They could do that. Um... So they got... I, they I, got I, I, I've heard the rings of... The wings of power. The rings of... The pa- wings of power! <laughs> Mowage... <laughs> That's twice I heard that. Yeah. Um Lord of the Rings. Yeah. What a what a concept. It's 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 I I, I, I love and Hobbits. I love the movies. I know you, you you're not a big fan of them. I've seen them. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, but did you ever see them extended? Yes. Did you ever see the Hobbit extended? No. Those are good. Are we talking Whoa, whoa, why do you want to see a little Hobbit? Hobbit kind of like <laughs> Circle baby's thumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's what we have for Blitz Go change your dressing. That's it? That's it. No TV? No TV. No Dude, wrestling? it's it's between everything. Alright. 
I guess that's all we have for Blitzkrieg News. Well, it's Blitzkrieg, Blitzkrieg. I think I'm good. We can go one more segment. Yeah? Yeah. You know what this reminds me of? Oh, fuck you. Catch up. <sighs> it was a gag, everybody. It's just catch up. Um, we was catch up. We just did this. Yeah. I've been playing a lot of Star Fox games. I know you have. To, uh, oh my god, 20 minutes in. Holy shit. Um, I've been playing a lot of Star Fox games. So we'll talk about that in the segment, in the topic of Star Fox. Uh, but what i also been doing was I finally finished up King in Black Omnibus, mm. which is which sucks because I can't really talk about it too much because I don't want you to get spoiled. Uh, but I'm still trying to drag this out. Um, but King in Black was the big uh, epic, uh, the, the the big climax to Donny Cates' <laughs> Venom, uh, Venom Venom Climax. Venom Climax, there it is. Um, basically, what the dealio is is that Null is the god of symbiotes. He controls and he rules over all the symbiotes. Um, he's actually a pretty bad boy. And, he really fucking is. I, I think it's cool how they weaved his history and other Marvel Universe, Marvel Comic Universe characters um, kind of like arbitrarily, but yeah. it made it work. So, I'm guessing Donny Cates also wrote that Thor run that had the whole... Um, with Gore the God Butcher and yeah, I the Necro Sword. So I think so. Okay. He also did Silver Surfer Black. So like all these things are kind of weaving yeah. into King in Black. Uh, so what's happening is um, after the events of Absolute Carnage, mm-hmm. basically Null knows that Venom has like the final codex. Right. So there's a lot of MacGuffins here. And to be honest, I, it, you really need to read his whole run uh-huh. in order to get a, a grander grasp, right. hard to say, of the entire story. But I'm only reading it from, you know, big story points. Um, so he's on his way to Earth. So okay. Eddie Brock has to prepare for Null. Um, Eddie Brock has a kid, Dylan, who he did yes, not know about for that the I knew, time, yeah. which might have been the symbiote kind of oppressing that knowledge, or his wife kind of like just being like, no, I don't want my son to have anything to do with you, which is right. understandable because Eddie Brock's a murderer, he's a, he's but a I mean, he's boy. turned around. Yeah, he, he's turned it back around. He's more hero than not. Turn around. Every time I see you, turn around. <laughs> I'm very toned down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it's basically just that it's basically all the heroes <sighs> up against Null okay um, so I'm reading the Omnibus I read the Omnibus which is how I do these things because I'm a big fucking sucker and I do these things where I try to read them in how does this Omnibus order, work then? in okay. chronological order it's a pain in my dick really what it is because the Omnibuses if they're not a, a, a story run, let's say. Uh-huh. Like if you're getting Donny Cates' Venom Omnibus, you're getting you're getting Venom one through whatever the fuck. Right. King in Black puts together King in Black one through five because it's always a mini series. It puts together Venom, the Venom books that are tied to it. Venom, Venom. Then it's putting together. It's like King in Black editions of uh, Sword, the Marauders, um, Fantastic Four, Amazing Spider Man, Miles Morales. Um, then you get little one shots like you know Gwenum versus Carnage. You get um, uh, the Thunderbolts. You get Cloak and Dagger. You know what I mean? You get like all these other characters, right? And I'm reading them thanks to I think it's like I think it's literally ComicBookReadingOrder.com, right? Like it will give you an event and tell you what order to read these things in. Because in the past I would read them and. You know, like they would. Like, perfect example would be um, not Spider Geddon. Spider Geddon did this thing where if you read Spider Geddon one through five, between issues three and four, people are referring to things that you didn't read. Oh, but if you read Spider Geddon Scarlet Spiders, you know what happens. So I'm a sucker, and I'm like, well, I need to know what happens, you know? So. Here's the omnibus, and I'm reading it in that order. And uh, unfortunately, and it has only been a few times where it's like, 
oh, okay, you know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, cool, like, this refers to that. I get it now. Otherwise, it was just a big waste of my time. But just put it in the order. Like, That's too much work, Tom. In the order. That's too much you work. You want to keep fans. And, and I honestly, the way I read it, that was a lot of work. So I can see why they don't want to do that. Because then you can pick and choose what you want to read. Look, hire my ass, Marvel. Sure. And I'll fucking put them in order. Okay, there you go. Hire Tom the uh, Chronologer. Exactly. Do something like that. <clears throat> well, speaking of Noel, oh, Marvel Snap has a bunch of like nullified cards. Mm, okay. They're they're fucking frightening looking. That's the thing. Like, so, did you you read? I forget where we were at with trading the backs, but I think you read the you read uh, Venomverus, Poison X, and Venom Get the Protector, Venom, whatever, oh, whatever. Yeah, you read those three ones, right? Yeah, where yeah, it was yeah. like Venom's fighting the poisons and shit. Yeah. Okay. It's like the same thing. Where it's just like, oh, here's a bunch of, here's Captain America, but he's Venom symbiote. Here's Wolverine, but he's Venom symbiote. Right. This is like, what if they're evil Venom symbiotes? Right. Like, it's the same thing. More yeah. evil. Yes. Well, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> well, the in the Clint it wasn't really that evil. Yeah, the they Cl- were just Venomized. Yeah, the Clintar. Venomized, that was the name of the thing. Funny. The Clintar aren't evil anymore, I don't know. The Clintar evil. were really never evil. It was just under Null's control. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and yeah, once yeah. Null. <clears throat> Shows up. Got away, got out of the picture. Right. And the Clintar's like, very hey, cool, you know? I know how this ends. Okay. You don't, But you don't know how you get there. Because, like no. I told you, there's one moment where I'm like, that's fucking dope. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like in King and Black 4. So it's like you didn't need to read the whole fucking thing. Right. But I digress. A lot of the stories were not necessarily vital, but good tales. You know, like Black Cat has a good one where she's got to, like, rescue Doctor Strange. Um... Um, Can they just put Spider Man and Black Cat together? I think they are. Really? I think they are now. Yeah. Badass. Yeah. Because I think Mary Jane's like married or some they're shit. Up and to she some has sort. Kids. They're leading up to some sort of thing where whatever. I guess this is Zeb Wells. I think doing um, Spider Man right now. I think at the beginning of his run, it was like, "What did Sp- Sp- Spider Man did some bad? Something bad? What happened?" And I think they're going to reveal what what happened. Oh, I wonder what he did. I don't fucking know. Well, that's what they're banking on. They go to the comic book shop and read Amazing Spider-Man 50. I just wait for a graphic novel. There you go. Um, <laughs> the Black Cat run was pretty cool. Thunderbolts was fine. Thunderbolts is now Marvel's Suicide Squad. Like, that's what it is. Uh, the Thunderbolts, it, they've always been... No, not the, not the first run. The first one, they tried to be heroes. Now they're just like, here's a bunch of villains. Just yeah, that actually, I think... Start- and they do make a lot of like, eh... Huh? Yeah, like they almost do the Will Smith. You were just some sort of Suicide Squad, you know? <laughs> like they, one of them says something. Like, I might be like Batroc the Leaper or some shit. I don't know. I liked what was it? <sighs> the Thunderbolts team that it was Punisher, Elektra, Deadpool. That's not Savage Avengers. No, no. which are also in this book, which is that, which is not bad. No, this was um. No, this was a Thunderbolt. Was Thunderbolts. It was, was Elektra. Iteration of Thunderbolts. Yeah, it was Elektra and Punisher. Deadpool, I want to say. Okay. Um, maybe Ghost Rider and Red Hulk. Jesus, because really all their uniforms were red, like had had like red oh, on okay. them. Like Punisher skull was red, right? And Punisher and Electro were banging. So I mean, you might as well. Yeah. Okay. Electro wears You're co-leading a team, so with Electro, so yeah. And Punisher clearly doesn't give a shit, so whatever. He shoots anywhere. Yeah. Does not shoot blanks, that guy. Um, he doesn't shoot anything anymore. Oh, yeah, no, he uses swords. Yeah. He uses his swords. He uses S-words. Um, I'll take so S-words for 500. It was like a Deadpool one, which was kind of dumb, yeah. uh, which is, uh, you know, Par for accurate. the course. Like, one, like Wiccan and... One of the early ones chronologically I had to read was, like, Wiccan and Hulkling. That, I, I, I want to read that story, the, the one where they got married. Like, right. It was like a whole big cosmic thing. It's a whole thing because it's like, I don't know where we are in the Marvel Universe. Right. Like, this is the Krakoan Age of X-Men, so I'm reading stuff about that. Like, there's the Marauders is cool. Because it's with uh, was it? with uh, uh, Kitty Pride, oh, okay, Pyro, yeah, yeah. Uh, Iceman, Bishop, right. on a ship, and they, they gotta, you know, rescue somebody. Um, Sword, I have no idea what the fuck I'm, I'm, watch, I'm looking at. You know what I mean? Like Magneto was running that, right? No, um, Allison Brand, someone Brand, Abigail Brand, Brand? Abigail Brand, Abigail Brand, right? Uh, and, but like, here's the thing: it's like these characters. I don't know their powers. I don't know anything about them. I don't think you know anyone I mean? knew Abigail's powers. 
She was like a psychic? She was like a strategist or something? Was she? I don't know. Like, That's what I it know, seems like. I know when she was first introduced, her and Beast were starting a thing. Okay. And she showed her powers off and like Beast went six to midnight. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. I don't really know. Um, but overall, King of Black was good. I really... Just shitty this how the is order now, is. Well, again, that's my fault. Like, honestly, the way they present it is how you should read it. You should just read the core. And this is how I'm going to be doing these things from now on. That's the only else I pick up. That's about an event. It's just going to be... I'm going to just read it. I'm just going to read the story. I know in my mind I can be like, all right, I'm going to put this to here to here. You know, like, I can, I can put that. Although... Here we there's go. Parts, no, there's parts where, like... Null is treated like in King and Black and Venom. Null is treated like a like a big deal. He is, you know. Um, he's he fights Scream, and he like loses, Banshee, but he like wait. walks away. No, uh, no, Scream the the I Venom symbiote. No, I know. Wah, wah. Um, yeah, why don't you bring Banshee in this? Because you yeah. said Scream. No, I know, but why didn't they oh. bring in Banshee? That's yeah, I don't get it. Anytime there was like a big issue with the symbiotes, hey, get Banshee and Siren. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Some hey. fire really is their go-to, but what are you going to do? Um, yeah, where's Human Torch? <laughs> actually, I think I think they say that Sonics, they're kind of more immune to Sonics more than ever. Right. Um, because I think it's like all the symbiotes are connected through a hive mind and a codex and this and that. It's, it is very bonkers and bewildering in some points, but it was entertaining. Like I said, there's one point where I was like, I was, I got excited. I was like, oh, that's really cool. Right, you know right. what I mean? Oh yeah, it's it, that's good stuff. Um, such good shit. Such good shit, man. But I'm like I said, I'm done reading omnibuses like that. I'm just gonna read the stories. My next story I'm gonna read is Devil's Reign. I'm gonna read the core story, mm-hmm. and then I I hope I don't like you know be like cool. I read it. Buy every buy buy every other book. You know, like, I, I want to read only a few other books. I know, but like I my, I can I can see my interest drop. I got, as soon as I read I was, Devil's got you Rain the core 1 story. through 5, yeah. And I got you another one. You I got, got you two. Think, Superior 4. Right. And I picked up X-Men and Villains for Hire. I think that's all there is. That, no, that is it. Yeah. But again, am I going to read it? Yeah, you will, because it's not Why? just words. It's also pictures. Yeah, that is true. But that's not... I don't have to read pictures. I could just look at pictures like I've been doing my whole life. Reading's hard, everybody. Sound the words out, you idiot. That's all I've been up to. You been up to anything, Tom? So, I know I talked about... I, I, I listened to uh, the Mr. Mercedes trilogy. Yes. Last episode. Yes. I enjoyed the shit out of it. Nice. It was very good. Nice. Picked up a Mercedes? And then... Yeah. Uh, cash, baby. Yeah. Tommy, no cash. Oh. Uh, oh. Gimmick change. Um, Tommy down on his luck. Never. Um, and then I was just like, ah, I'm gonna watch the series. Okay. Didn't you watch the series I already? I barely made oh. it through season one. How many seasons are there? Three. Trilogy, got it. Um, I... How many episodes are there? Like, ten episodes each. Mm. I rage quitted season two. They did something, I was just like... Fuck you, no. I'm was done. it not anything... It was, was it not adapted from the... Book? Correct. Oh. And it was something super... Mix it up. Like, what they changed, I feel, is super pivotal for a character. Interesting. And I was just like, fuck you, no. I'm done. Right. I walked away. Okay. That's all I've been up to. Okay. That actually reminds me, I, I'm, I'm, that has not been all I've been up to. Um, I finished up the first season of Your Honor, which is the uh, Showtime show with... Um, Brian Cranston. Cranston. Yep. Um, pretty good first season. So the premise of the show is that um, Brian Cranston's son... Cranston. Uh, gets in a car. Uh, it, it, it's down in Louisiana. There's racial tension. There's um, poverty. There's class strife. There's a whole... It's a powder keg, you know? Um, there's organized crime, which we're going to get into. Uh, not us, but as I'm explaining the story... So, talking about Star Fox? No, I meant, like, you know, us personally um so what happens is brian cranston is uh is is driving around uh hits and runs a, 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 another young boy he's involved runs in up a dying. Hit and run. yes he's involved in a hit and run i would probably use your way to say that thank you the boy dies the the other the boy you got hit dies brian cranston's son panics has an asthma attacks freaking out 
you know, is going through a lot of shit, you know, that we get into in the story in the in the season, ends up fleeing the scene. Okay. Brian, so hold on. Mm-hmm. Brian Cranston hits this person. No, his son. Okay, you said Brian Cranston hit. Him. Like Brian Cranston's son hit him. Okay. Um, he, uh, Brian Cranston, and his son talk about it. Find out what happens. Turns out that the son is the youngest son of uh, a, a prolific mob family. The s- son who got hit and killed. Yes, the son who got hit. Okay, because you just keep saying. I the keep word saying the son. word son. You're right. As I was saying it, I was getting confused, but I knew what I was saying. How much blood have you lost? Um. That sucks because that's on the thumb, and the thumb never yeah, stops yeah, bleeding. No. Um, so there's a lot of like, oh shit, we can't, we can't go to the police for this. They'll fucking kill you. Right, you'll be done. I'm, I'm also a judge. Brian Cranston says I'm a very high profile uh, criminal judge. Judging in this land of Louisiana is very different. It is very much like you're also an attorney for justice. Okay. You know, like, the first time you see him perform his judgely duties, um, he basically almost kind of steps in and is like, oh, actually, you know, it should be this. You know, like, he, and he, you know, he basically does the, like, defense attorney's job for him. Huh. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's like, oh, geez, like, okay, like, but, you know, it was for the greater good. Right. So, he's, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. He's got a pull in some political favors to get rid of the car, uh, but then what happens is they they involve, a, like, a gang to, like, you know, steal the car and get rid of it, but then that kid gets pulled over, and then they realize the car is part of a hit-and-run, and oh my god, it hit the kid, the, 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 the mob boss's son, so now he gets put in a trial, and there's a whole, it, it, it's very tense, it's classic from Breaking Bad, bad Brian Cranston, it's not really classic. I guess more modern because classic would be Malcolm in the Middle, or right? Yeah, something like that. So it's not nothing like that, but it is very tense. Huh. There's uh, a lot of drama, and the way it ends it was like, holy shit! Like I did not expect it to end that way. I figured each season was going to be almost like its own little encapsulated tale. It's already done. No, they're on season two right now, oh. and that's happening right now. But it season the the, the storyline from one is still going on. I figured from from first episode to the finale would have been, you know, here's a resolution, cool, and the next season would be like, oh, what crazy misadventures is Brian Cranston and his <laughs> fucking shitty driving son gonna get into now? Not the case. <laughs> Haven't started season two yet. Needed a breather, because we, uh, me and my girlfriend, we, we binged like the last couple episodes. We're right. Like, we need the break. This this is too much right now. It's, it's very... Very tense, very good. Um, check it out if you got Very nice, time. very evil. Yeah, very evil. Yeah. But also, very nice. Um, and now I can comfortably say that is all I've been up to. Good. And now I can redress my wound. All Brood Craft Report. You're gonna, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna report? You're gonna report? Tom, Tom, I can't hear you. Are you there? Check in, check in. Ah! Tom! <laughs> Our own resident Slippy, uh, Tommy Cash. Fuck everybody. that. Uh, I am so much cooler than Slippy. Sli- Slippy's a fucking chump. Slippy is a chump, huh? Wow. So anyway, Star Fox, everybody. I don't like Slippy. 30th on it. No shit. Never have. Star Fox. Baby, it's Star Fox. Star Fox, one of the most, um, man, I'd say iconic Nintendo franchises. No, I mean, it is. I mean, I feel like a lot of Nintendo, if they're in Smash Brothers predominantly, Uh I'm going to say throughout the the entirety of the series, yes, they're iconic. I mean, just in general, I'd say it's like, they're pretty iconic. Yeah. Um, do they pump out quality games all the time? No! Definitely not. definitely not. No, not at all. No, definitely, definitely not. Um, but, people love it. I love it. I don't know about you. Do you love it? I like it. Okay. I, 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 too I, strong of a word? Yeah. Okay. I don't fair. love many things. What's your history of Star Fox, Tom? Uh, I played on the Super Nintendo. Okay. And a little bit on the N64. Okay. And watched you play on Twitch. 
Gotcha, yeah. Twitch.tv forward slash RudeBoys469. Yes. I played the GameCube uh, Star Fox Assault. But, 30th anniversary, Star Fox. Star Fox came out in 1993. Japan. Japan! Went to the Famicom. Five! Um, pretty interesting story, though. Um, so, the company that will become known as Argonaut Software, they were uh, UK-based. Okay. They wanted to make games for uh, the Game Boy. Right. Uh, originally, they wanted to make games for the Game Boy, but um, they couldn't get a development kit, or they couldn't basically become, like, a partner to make games. So what they did, they just kind of, like, reverse-engineered that information. With a lot of their uh, PC knowledge, they made this game called... Actually, you were right over there. It's called X, or Lunar Chase. Um, it's basically a 3D... You know that game Tanks? Battle Tanks, I guess it's called? Yeah. Um, it's like a first-person tank game, and it they made 3D work the best it can. They had M. Bison in it. That guy looks like M. Bison, yes. And I really thought this book you threw me was a comic book. like a like Oh, a old... oh you got really excited, I and then really you got really confused. I did. I was just like, oh shit, it's a Star fucking... Fox actually, they did have a comic. I'm they like, fuck, it's a... a comic crossover with Star Fox and F-Zero? Dude, that'd be dope. Yo, that's Honestly, awesome. yeah, just slap that bothered. all, you, slap you just, all you your... Ruined, you ruined my night. I'm sorry. Slap all your sci-fi franchises together, Nintendo. Just Star Fox, F-Zero, Metroid. You want to throw a little Pikmin in there, too? Fine. You know, whatever. Make it a fucking... I don't know what to tell you. But... Only if the Pikmin can be shot at. So, uh, Argonaut Software, basically, with their technical expertise... Okay. ...was like, uh, hey, Nintendo, check this shit out. And they're like, all right, it's pretty cool. Let's make a Super Famicom game, Super Nintendo game. Um, which will end up becoming Star Fox because they're, the technological prowess of Argonaut, your Dylan Cuthbert, your Giles Goddards, uh, under the tutelage of Shigeru Miyamoto, and those guys in Nintendo uh, NCL, they were able to put together Star Fox. So a game where it is... Um, how would you explain what Star Fox looks like, the Super Nintendo one? Polygons. Polygons. <laughs> which was something that could not have been feasible. Yeah. But it was. You know? Yeah. They were able to make a own special chip, the Super FX chip, and put that into Star Fox to make to give that game more processing power to do something like that. It's an on rail uh space shooting game. It's like your space harriers or your um afterburners, I think, the the, the on the on the Segas, on the Sega Arcade and the Genesis and whatnot. Um similar to that. With the Nintendo flair of having anthropomorphic animals as your pilots and your um, your co-pilots and your um, mission giver and your enemies and stuff like that, like that was the whole thing. Um, famously, Shigeru Miyamoto kind of came up with this kind of brainchild was this with the um, the Japan those Japanese gates okay. that you walk through. So he was like, "What if it was a game where you could like fly under them?" Which is kind of like I one of the hear that books. sound when you fly through them. Yeah, yeah. It sounds great. Yeah. Like, um, and also, it deals with like also some sort of Japanese fable with wolves versus apes. So, hence why you know you're, you're yeah yeah I guess like more dogs yeah, yeah. fox not wolves but um, yeah you've, your main character is a fox and your main antagonist is an ape Andros. Um, so once Star Fox came out, it was kind of like a revelation to a lot of people, to especially gamers of at that generation. Like it was something that was like, what the fuck even is this? The music is fucking music right. slaps. Corneria, amazing. The chatter of all the, uh, everybody chiming in. Yeah. Is that Peppy? That was Falco. Oh. Peppy was like, derp, derp. oh, no, Peppy was like, burp, 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 burp. right, right. Um, so yeah, Fox is your main character. Fox McCloud, he is a fox. Big shock. Falco Lombardi is your kind of ace pilot. He's a bird. Um, and a hothead. He's a yeah. He's 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 brash. He's Fa a hothead. Falco is actually all, always my favorite. Falco's a good guy. I like him. I mean, Falco's a fine guy, but I like him too. Wow. Uh, so that's how you feel about me? That I'm a fine guy. Why? Why do? You, why do you see he's yourself a, as the Falco he, of this podcast? He's a fine feathered, yes. fellow. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, Peppy hair. Though he's is, very foul. Yep. Oh. 
All right, I'm done. Eat her. <laughs> uh, Peppy Hair is a rabbit, and Slippy Toad is a frog. Fucking stupid Slippy. Um, it was only until Star Fox 64 when they're given actual voice clips right. and a little more personalities, you know? Like, um, Slippy's kind of like your tech expert, but also uh, a ditz. Peppy is your elder, wiser... Even though he doesn't uh, look he elder. Info. Well, yeah, I mean, these... So, so what Tom's looking at right now... Yeah, he's, he's not... He doesn't really look elder. Even in, in, the, the in the later games, they definitely yeah, age like, him up. Like, oh, we're gonna put glasses on him. That, that, that yeah. makes him look yeah. old. In Star Fox Command, they give his, like... I don't even know what you call this. Like, the muzzle, almost. Like, right. Like, they make it more fluffy. Like, it's a big beard. Gotcha, gotcha. Big, big mustache-beard combo. Um... But uh, Star Fox 64 was the game that came out for the N64. Big shock. Um, it is almost like a remake of the first Star Fox game. Um, another famous thing with Star Fox, which is also kind of like, I guess, almost like the the black cloud over the entire franchise, was that there was a sequel in development that never came out until years and years later called Star Fox 2. Star Fox 2 was in development up until the N64 was being about to come out. And they canceled it because they're like, listen, we're trying to push this the 64. We, we're, we're done with the old shit. we right. got to hop on the new shit, you know? And for what it's worth, Star Fox 2 was released on the Super Nintendo uh, Classic Edition and also the Super Nintendo Online, the Switch the app for the Nintendo Switch Online. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and it is really good. Um, it is more Star... It's basically Star Fox, but just bigger and better. More characters, um, more all-range flying, which was something that was added in Star Fox... Well, really, I guess added in Star Fox 2, but, you know, for the public in Star Fox 64, where instead of an on-rails level, you're actually flying around kind of like right. in 3D space. Um, and you get the walker, too, which is a... Um, you're basically your ship transforms into a... Like a ATST sort of thing, and it just kind of walks around on the ground, shoots, and then you can instantly, like, you press a button and you, you transform and you keep flying. And that's and that's street. <sighs> um, God, I wish I could drink. <laughs> I did almost was like, ah, right, it's not alcohol. Um, <laughs> so again, Star Fox Two didn't right. come out. Star Fox sixty four. That is my favorite game. That that was one of the games that made me a Star Fox fan. I did play the Super Nintendo one at a friend's house at the time. I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. But, you know, like, it, right. it, at the time, I wasn't really hooked until Star Fox 64 happened. A big part of that was the promotional video that um, the, the, the Nintendo Power put out. How fucking long is that? Hang on one second. All right, it's like 10 minutes long. I was going to show Tom. Uh, but it basically is like this, like weird mock story of a Nintendo employee getting kidnapped by a Sony and Sega employee because the Nintendo employee has all this secret information about the new Star Fox 64 with the Rumble Pack and all this shit. And it was such propaganda. And it was it was goofy, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like, you know, it was it's totally tongue-in-cheek about everything. Like, right, like, yeah, like yeah, of course. You know, but it was like... And it was pretty fun, and it was it hyped me up for the game. Once I played the game, I literally ended friendships over this game because this was deep in the console wars. Like people have to understand, like you know, lines had to be drawn somewhere. And Star Fox sixty four was my um, battle of the bulge, I guess, because <laughs> I'm always I, I, I didn't I'm, mean the belly. I'm I battling a bulge since oh. I was thirty. Jesus Christ! Um, I'm like Peppy. But Star Fox 64, amazing game, and unfortunately the series has always tried to recapture what they do. Right. That. The next Star Fox game to come out is called Star Fox Adventures. Now, you might be thinking, but, I mean, that that's... How is that a Star Fox game, you know? It never was supposed to be a Star Fox game. So Rare, the famous second party Nintendo had during the N64 era, uh-huh. um, was coming up with this game called Dinosaur Planet. Nintendo, it was towards the end of the N64. Star, um, Nintendo took a look at this and was like, okay, cool. Two things. One, this is going to GameCube now. Because we're done with the old shit. Right. Mm, sounds familiar. We're well, the new shit. And second, uh, this character looks like Fox. So uh, make it a Star Fox game. And they're like, okay. So if you play this game, and I did play it for my replay... Um, it is very disjointed. It wants to be two things, and it doesn't do both things perfectly. It does two things fine. 
Um, so it is a very fine Zelda clone um, with a lot of interesting technical things with it. You have a side character, uh, you have a dinosaur pet that comes around, not really pet, I guess, co-star, sidekick, sidekick, um, who has his own AI and, you know, he can find treasures for you and dig holes and stuff like that. Like, it should be a dog, but I don't, they make it a dinosaur. I don't fucking know. Um. Because you're playing as a dog. You're playing as a fox. Lupine. Um, and it's totally like outside of like the dungeons, it's totally open world. Like a lot of the areas are very like nowadays. You can see where Wait, these pieces meet. I didn't see a dinosaur when you were playing. I was playing Star Fox Assaults. This was oh, Star Fox Adventure, a different game. Fox Tom, if you want to refer to the book to your side, you can see a dinosaur. No, I'm disappointed in that. Well, a lot of people are disappointed in this game. No, I'm disappointed in that book. Um, but Star Fox Adventures. So, like, it, it has this big burning. dinosaur planet hub where, you know, you go to, like, the ice mountains. How do you get to the ice mountains? You basically just walk, you know? Like, you walk, you know... Like, they make the caves and shit. It is very uh, backtracky, but, like, I've, there were, like, no loading screens or anything like that for that time. This was an early GameCube game. But, like, now, mm -hmm. is it's just you and the dinosaur walking around? Like... I mean, there's dinosaurs and shit in there. There's enemies no, but, and stuff. No, but, but like... like does your party build? Like, do you get slippy? And so no. So, uh, so again, this no. sh was not a Star Fox game. They made it a Star Fox right. game. So, like, your character could have been any other character, but now it's Fox. So, yes, the Star Fox aspects of this game are very minimal to the extent that your menu is basically the Star Fox team. So it's like, where's the map? Oh, let's talk to Peppy. Peppy gives you the map. What sort of advice... Like, like, it's really good also with, like, a hint system, which is Slippy. Slippy helps you out with that. You call it General Pepper. He gives you your information. Falco is also not in the game. Oh, but he was a spoiler alert. Because, again, he had a... He's a hothead, you know? So I'm sure he was just like, fuck you, Fox. I'm out of here. Until he's like, you know what, Fox? I miss you. No, he's probably like, fuck this. I don't want to be involved in this game. Well, yeah, I think so. Um, and your other Star Fox thing is that to get to the dungeons that I said before is a Star Fox on-rails flight mission. Gotcha. Flying from this point of the planet to the other point of the gotcha, planet. Gotcha, gotcha. The whole plot is nonsense, and it's totally like... Really? This really shouldn't sounds be... Sounds not nonsense. But, again, if it was its own thing, it would probably be... It would probably just be like, yeah, it was Dinosaur Planet, that was fine. But I was like, it's a Star Fox game, eh. But, looking back at it, because the last time I played it was when it first came out... Um, it's really not as bad as I thought. Um, and at this point, also, it is lore building, which I do as a as, a, love, as, a, as an older lore. man, older gamer. I do enjoy more. Um, but enough about Star Fox Adventures. Let's move on to Star Fox Assault. So, Star Fox Assault, I played on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash rudeboys four six nine, which you can find our archives on our YouTube page, which is youtube.com forward slash at rudeboys four six nine. Star Fox Assault is a more return to form of Star Fox, and what I mean with that is it's more action on rails, mission based stuff. Um, Tom, you watched me play that game. I did. There is a there is on rails stuff. You're in the ship. Sometimes you're on on ground with the Landmaster tank, or you're running around with a blaster. Um, blast them. The last time, so again, the last time I played this game was when it first came out. I got a blast them. Sixty four was the one that I hit that hit me. Yeah. So any other Star Fox game I enjoyed, but I was like, it's, it's never going to be as good as Star Fox sixty four, which is what which is going to be what a lot of people say going forward, because um, it is still probably one of the best selling Star Fox games out there. But I, so you watch me play this. A lot of the missions are just fucking like, what what am I even doing? Took you forty minutes to run a dungeon. Exactly. Yes, run a dungeon. That's some Final Fantasy fourteen talk coming out of you. Yeah. Um, but you're right. But you're right. Yeah. Like it was just some missions were just a little arbitrary. Just like, oh, okay, unfair I stuff. I was not high enough. I, well, to, okay. To to be watching that. Um. But uh, the it it was technically it was good. Mechanically it was fine. You know, I actually did enjoy it this playthrough more so than I thought I would. You know, like I had no muscle memory, so a lot of it was also like. Oh, I think I remember this, and like you know, I would do stuff, and I, it, it, I had a pretty good time. Good, you know. Uh, that's 
what is important Absolutely. on the Rude Boys Twitch TV forward slash dot com. <laughs> I had all the words. You had all the words, but you, just, you, you garbled them up. Um, the next game. I wish we were a fucking visual medium. I your face. We may have to start trying to do episodes on Twitch. We might have to. Yes. Um, the next game to come out was uh, Star Fox Command on the Nintendo DS. Tom, I have all these games. Do you want to borrow them? Nah. No, I know you don't want to. <laughs> but you know, for you know, a uh, it's like show and tell. You know. Uh. So. You know, here's Star Fox. You got beat up a lot at school, didn't you? No, I didn't. I, I uh, <laughs> well, flew I under the radar. God, how light these cartridges were. Yeah, right? So that's Star Fox. These are the two GameCube games. Star Fox Adventures and Assault. So you can see maybe Tricky on um, Little Dinosaur. Oh, is this also, right? Crystal, not it, not really in the game. She's kind of, she's fridged straight up in the beginning. She's what? Fridged. You don't know that phrase? No. Where they take the, um, the female main character and uh-huh. just kind of like you know kind of like put her in the cast like a like apparel you know like gotcha. I guess kind of like, I'm, I'm probably misexplaining was Crystal it. always supposed to be like a dancer type looking like, like a, a belly gy- dancer like, like gypsy yeah. I mean in that game yes oh okay. because that's how Rare made it and they made her uh, like you know like Jessica Rabbit Lola Bunny sort of like okay like you're you know the face that launched a thousand furries right there not, I mean, it is what it is, everybody. Um, but yeah, no, she becomes more, she becomes integral into the Star Fox team in Assault. Right. Um, and then in Star Fox Command. So, Star Fox Command. I do enjoy how every time they show Fox with his teeth open, you just see those fucking teeth that can rip someone's They're throat like little out. daggers, yeah. Fucking love it. I fucking love it. Um, kind of looks like Bazinga right there. Eh, a little bit. Um, and then Star Fox 64 is over there. But I already sat down. Um, My little fox dog. So, Star Fox Command. Right. Came out for the Nintendo DS. I just actually played a playthrough on um, the Wii U Virtual Console. Okay. Which, uh, Nation, get on that. Yeah, that That's about to shut down very soon. Um, and so, S- Star Fox 64. Star Fox, the first one, gave you three different paths to choose, right? Basically... Easy, medium, hard. Right. Star Fox 64 gave you kind of branching paths. You go fight this boss, you go this way, you stop this thing from happening, you go that way, you know, and, and you basically kind of were able to carve your own path to Venom. Star Fox Adventures, not a Star Fox game. Star Fox Assault was very linear. Yeah. You had missions 1 through 10. Yeah. And that's it. You know what I mean? You can increase the difficulty, try to find f- hidden flags, but uh, other than that, you're playing the same game. Right. I thought you were going to say flasks for some reason. No. I was like... <laughs> Star Fox Command okay. is a Star Fox game with like ten times as much lore as you think you're going to get. You're getting way more characters. You're getting Peppy's daughter. You're getting Slippy's fiance. You're getting all of Star Wolf Tom's, Tom's face right there. I knew I wasn't getting away from that. Wait. Yep. Wait. No, she's in there. She's, he slips it in. You must. Um, <laughs> you get different ships, different play styles, a complete touchscreen uh, control, which is not great, but, you know, it's the DS, so we got to use it. Um, branching storylines, strategy elements. That's something else that I didn't talk about. Star Fox 2 was heavy into strategy. Did you play it when you had the Super Nintendo thing you didn't play? It? Okay. No, um, I dropped it as, like, all that shit was coming out. Okay. So... Star Fox 2, the way that it's laid out is you get a map of Lilat, you get Cornaria in one corner, Venom in the other corner, planets, Venom, asteroids, Venom, whatever. Venom, Venom, they Venom, launch uh, motherships out, and those motherships attack planets, so then you have to go to the planets to, to basically fend, to, to defend them, and then they launch missiles towards the huh. towards Cornaria that you have to end up you know intercepting or stopping or whatever. Since that game was scrapped air quotes, um, they repurpose that idea in Star Fox Command. So what Star Fox Command is, is every mission, and every mission you come up to, you, the Great Fox pops up, the ships come out, and you have to basically go around and eliminate all threats in the map. Um, 
and you do that basically by touch using the touch screen and creating your flight path like you would in Star Fox 2. Okay. M- minus the touch screen, obviously. But you would do that, and then, you know, you would hit, you would run into some enemies, you'd have to do a little all-range mode flight mission, you'd have to stop missiles, you'd have to um, destroy motherships. Pretty interesting stuff, which is what they did. I do like what they did there. Um, I wouldn't make a whole game over it, because, it, like, I, that's just me personally. You want to talk about um, visual novel and... Uh, all complete touchscreen uh, strategy stuff. I'm not your guy, but right. I like what they did. I respect it because nice. you, from the very linear Star Fox Assault to a game where there's ten possible endings based on how you navigate the plot. I mean, all right, I, I, that's that's not bad. I'm not gonna lie. Like, that's that's pretty good. Um, this game is effectively kind of bookends Star Fox for a, a, a very good time. Okay. Okay, because Crystal, you know, Star Wolf, as you know it, um, pretty much stops here. Gotcha. The next Star Fox game to come out, Star Fox 64, 3D. Remake of Star Fox 64, okay. which in turn was a remake of Star Fox. I remember you were you were, you were fairly excited for this. Like, I really was, because yeah. this looked fucking dope. This, was, this got Q Games back... Uh, up in the mix. Q Games was the company that Dylan Cuthbert from Argonaut Software, one of the creators of Star Fox, created. Okay. Um, Star Fox also has a tendency to get bounced around a lot by a lot of companies. Um, so, Star Fox was made by Argonaut. Star Fox 64 was made in, in, in Nintendo. Right. Star Fox Adventures made by Rare. Assault made by Namco Bandai. Star Fox Command, Q Games. Um... Star Fox 64, kind of Q games, and also Nintendo. But again, we're going back to the well with Star Fox 64. Right. Not like I'm complaining, but like also it's like, mm, time to time to maybe come up with something new. And the new thing they came up with, Star Fox Zero okay. for the Wii U. Um, I only played this game once. Its biggest thing is going to be the controls. The control is going to take a lot of getting used to. Tom, I'm going to... We're not a visual medium, so what's happening, Tom? I'm not going to play the game, obviously. But picture... You know what Star Fox looks like. Uh-huh. You know what you're expecting. You're getting a ship, and it's flying yeah. through Corneria City, okay? You're controlling it with the thumbsticks, right? Okay. But you're also using the gamepad almost like... So you're not necessarily shooting straight. You're shooting almost like your gun has like a pivot or something. Okay. You know what I mean? So in a situation where you could be flying one way and shooting this way, you know, like if you were trying to circle strafe around an enemy or something like that. Huh. It, exactly. You got to try to wrap your head around it and yeah. then also try to play the game. It's tricky. And I don't talk about Prince tricky. I'm talking about it's very tough to wrap your head around and it's a huge barrier for entry and a big hurdle that this game, unfortunately, couldn't shake. Um, I can't shake them! Um, and it also came out for the Wii U, which is also another fucking... Yeah, sorry, everybody. Um, I didn't mind the Wii U. I didn't mind it either, but, like, you know, in the same sense of making Star Fox uh, Command very touchscreen-based, like, you could have played that game with buttons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe done some stuff on the touchscreen. Right, yeah. It is what it is. Um... That's pretty much the mainline Star Fox games. I do want to play Zero again, because I'm already on a roll, playing on a barrel roll, doing uh, all these Star Fox games. Yep. Um, some other games of note to talk about. Star Fox Guard, which was uh, a re- a co-re-release, I suppose, of Star Fox Zero. Um, this basically takes... Um, there was a tech demo that uh, Miyamoto put, wanted to do. It was called Project Guard, where it's basically Five Nights at Freddy's, almost. Like, you get, like... If you want to see the uh, the art, you basically get like it's like surveillance cameras. It was a Slippy and his dad. Slippy and his uncle Grippy. Yep. God damn it. Yep. Um, God damn it. But like you get, um, you know, you're you're supposed to get like it's like surveillance cameras, and you have to set, and it's almost tower defense. So is this a Star Fox game? Not with Star Fox. Star Fox is in it though, because you can call him to do like strikes and is shit. That Rob the robot. Yeah, oh yeah, Star Fox 64 brought in Rob. Like, like, Rob 64. Right. And then they just kind of kept that going, you know, 
itself. So, like, yeah, you'll get, like, huh. kind of Rob the Robot sort of looks to it. I never knew that. Yeah. I didn't know that's where he started. Well, I mean, he started in real life, but... Like, no, he kind of he I didn't, has a whole little... I didn't know he started in the Star Fox franchise. Who, Rob? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, Rob had his own games on the NES also. Oh, okay, yeah. you just confused me. Oh, well, he came in real life, the Rob the Robot. I got Rob the Robot. Yeah, I... I am well aware. Um, another, Starlink, Battle for Atlas. Um, this was a game Ubisoft put out. And, like, yeah, um, you like Star Fox, Jared White. You may like this. Yeah, no, this and is here's a, really, a bunch of this toys. Is a really, well, yeah, this is a really cool game. Um, especially when you just like ignore everything else and just pretend it's a Star Fox right. game because you can play as Fox throughout the entire game. Fox! So it's like, yeah, I'm, in, I'm into that. And I dig it. You see a little R wing um, toy to life. Why thing. is it called an R wing? I think that's because it's Argonaut Software made it, so they were just like, they put their own kind of like signature on it, so they called it R Wing, A R Wing. So it's not like. Argonaut. Not like R, not like X Wing. Or maybe right. maybe they were, you know, they were also like Argonaut, X Wing, R Wing, you know, maybe A-wing. something like that. A Wing's already exists in Star Wars Universe. I know, but you, okay. you, you were just referencing X Wing, so I Right, but maybe we were, that's what they thought. I was on a roll with you. Oh, no. Not on a bagel. Barrel roll. Um, so here's my important question about okay, this. Okay, yes, go ahead. Now, when you were playing your Super Nintendo games, uh huh, would you take the plastic off? Yes, and put it. Okay, yes, give it a little hat. Yep, absolutely. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Would it take it and fling it? Like, no. I've known people who've done that. Oh my god, yeah. savages! Those are the same people that say fucking at ats. Burned alive. Um, and um, <laughs> it's the only time I can get Chris to be vicious. I feel like you also can't not talk about Star Fox and not mention Smash Brothers. Ooh, I think Smash, Smash Brothers, Brothers. Smash Brothers has made so many non-relevant Nintendo properties relevant. Yeah. F Zero, case in point. I think that's why they bundled those two franchises together. So I'm so angry. About I just that. don't know what to tell you. Um, Star was, Fox, Kid I Icarus. So, I was so you know? happy. I was just like, oh shit! I'm gonna be looking at a fucking Star Fox and F Zero crossover while he's that going on about Star Fox. I was like, what the fuck is this? But I mean, Fox has been pretty much predominant in the entire franchise since its uh, inception. You know, he's been in the, 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 all the games, Falco, Wolf, they've had a multitude of stages, mostly just great Fox, but what are you going to do? Um, but he's always, he's that one where it's like, Fox, Final Destination, no items, like that meme, you yeah. know, like he's always going to be part of the star of Smash Brothers. Yeah. And then therefore, hopefully, knock on wood, that uh, drums up some more Star interest Fox in this. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and what, what sucks about Star Fox in general, is that they want to make these games big deals, but I feel like they they're flat. better off just keeping it simple, you know? Like, make them score attack based, which, which, which games like that don't exist anymore, yeah. so maybe just make it like a small budget They game, just roll you know? in a barrel. Exactly, roll out the barrel. Um, just You got hit them. by a rolling barrel in Star Fox Assault. I did, yes. Yeah, those powder kegs, which are barrels. Yeah. Oh, we did. We make. We should have made that joke then. I did. Did you make it then? Yeah. Oh, you just weren't. Well, you was going to pay attention. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but I, 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 I said you got hit by a barrel, a ba- by a barrel roll. Ah. Uh, um, but I, I feel like Star Fox can come back. Yeah, Tom's a Tom's a thinker. <laughs> I feel like Star Fox can definitely come back um, with this uh, Super Mario movie coming out in a couple months. Um, Illumination has their hands in it. I think a Star Fox show can work. I said this on the stream, where it, it could almost be like a Bad Batch situation. Like, they just go on better. weekly missions. Bad Batch is good. Give it a chance. Um, not till Omega's dead. Just, that's not happening. Damn it. Well, I, I mean, I don't, know what, I don't know what happens to these characters. Um, but, I mean, it can do that. They can do one mission a, a, an episode, you know? It can be just like, you know, we gotta go collect this thing, and it turns out to be... Uh, I don't know, a present for General Pepper because it's his birthday. You know? I'll like, take just something silly. I'll take four Slippies over one Omega. Okay. Um, and they can do stuff like that, you know? They can make it, you know, CG. We saw the um, the Battle Begins anime that came out uh, f- uh, promotional for Star Fox Zero. That's pretty cool. That looked cool, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? 
maybe a little too high budget than what they want to do for Star Fox if they want to do something a little, you know, lower scale. But, like, I think it's doable. You know, you got the lore. You've got, you know, it, it's a cast of characters. It's ships. It's sci-fi. It's... It's... Star Fox. Star Fox, yeah. Star Fox! We're always talking about Star Fox! And on that note, Nation. Damn, we really need to start being a visual medium. It's, <laughs> it's damn true. Thank you for joining us for the Rude Boys Power Hour Plus uh, Big Time Star Fox episode. Happy birthday, Star Fox. Happy you anniversary, Star Fox. It's not his birthday, it's an anniversary. Next episode of the Rude born. Boys Power Hour Plus. Who's conceived? In the, in the mind of Shigeru Miyamoto. Um, he wasn't conceived. I said he was conceived. He was he created. Wasn't conceived. Okay. Um, next time on the Rude Boys Power Hour Plus. Why would we do this? It's one of your favorite franchises. It's Rocky. Because it's Creed <laughs> coming out. <laughs> on March 3rd. <laughs> so we'll be late, but we're going to talk about Rocky. Going to talk about Rocky. <laughs> Dun-da, freeze frame. We're going to talk about Rocky next episode from News Power Hour Plus. Uh, we saw the statue. So we got there. There we go. We got some, we got some, got some history. Are you okay? <laughs> You're already off. You're already done. Um, we're talking about Rocky. In case you didn't get that. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, let us know your Rocky memories. Let us know your Star Fox memories, Renation. You know, reach out to us on our social media platforms. Please reach out to us. We're tired of talking to ourselves. Twitter.com forward slash readboys469. Facebook.com forward slash readboys469. <laughs> and Instagram.com forward slash readboys469. <laughs> Uh, we were, if you saw us for our sh- our Star Fox Assault stream on twitch.tv forward slash rudeboys469, I was able to set up a different rig to stream things that I can't uh, stream through uh, modern means. Basically, I'm using a webcam and I'm uh, recording myself playing a game. And yeah. I don't think it was that bad, right? No. It looked good, looked pretty good. A couple of audio issues. Well, I mean, that, that, that's even Get with ready modern. for more Switch. Yeah, Switch, old games. Like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Time to break know. out the PS2 to play Punisher. Hell yeah, brother. Um, but that's, like I said, twitch.tv forward slash rootboys469. Anything, any sort of announcements will be out of our uh, Instagram, instagram.com forward slash rootboys469. But enough of that shit. Any of our shit on twitch.tv forward slash rootboys469, anything we archive, going to be on our YouTube page. Our YouTube? Yes, we do. <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash at rudeboys 469 That's that, yeah. Um, but our podcast, which also goes on YouTube, you can find that at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, and our Home Away From Home, our Great Fox our uh, Cornarian base is on the Podbean Network, rudeboys.podbean.com. Bean. If you want to hit me up on social media, I'm at Tess Shurns, T-E-H underscore S-H-E-R-M-S. Um, this fancy drink I made um, without any blood or snafu of cutting myself, uh, you can find at shermixalat 64 on Instagram. If you want to get me on social media, you can get me at Tommy underscore Cash 80. And that's Cash with a K. And that's it, Nation. Mission accomplished. We did it. Moving on to the asteroid belt. Moving on to the championship belt on the Rocky episode. Coming up <laughs> next. You like these, right? Asteroid ass. Oh my god. This has been a presentation of the Rude Boys Podcast Network. Um, oops.